Alrighty, in today's video, we're gonna be crushing some very common fragrance misconceptions. I have a few listed out here, and if I happen to think of any more as I'm going, I'll throw those in as well, because there's a lot of information out there that you might not have consumed yet as a beginner into this hobby, and there might even be some information that you have looked into that has not been so accurate. So I wanna to try to straighten some of these out if you are someone that's new to the fragrance hobby. I know when I was first starting out, it was very overwhelming and there was a lot to take in. We'll actually start the first one off with one that uh, <laughs> I just popped into my head I didn't even think about prior, but I wanna say it now before I forget. And that is going to be the whole idea behind, you know, fragrances or, or certain ones have to be for fall, certain ones have to be for summer and, and so on, right? It gets very specific and even can get down to some are only good for uh, you know, an office environment, some are only go good for a club environment, party setting, whatever, right? That's kind of a rabbit hole to get into. And, and that was one of the things that I struggled with the most when I was first starting out because people would say, oh, this is a clubbing scent. This is a date night scent. This is a work scent. And I'm sitting there thinking, how do you know? You know, who makes these rules? How do you know that? The fact of the matter is when you've smelled a, a multitude of different things, you kind of start to learn what style and type of scent and what type of performance works for certain types of environments. But the honest, straightforward answer is it doesn't matter as much as you might think, okay? And yes, I do my fall and, and winter, summer list videos. I talk about, oh, this is good for this time of year, this is good for that time of year, because when you have a lot of fragrances, you're gonna have certain particular times to wear them and certain fragrances do work better in certain environments. But the fact of the matter is the average consumer goes into Sephora or Ulta, they pick something up off the shelf, they wear it every single day, spring, summer, fall, winter. And we're talking things like Invictus, Eros, One Million. Some of those are not so summer friendly, you know? And so they do it and it works fine. They get great compliments. That's why those fragrances sell so well. When they get them and they start getting compliments then their buddies wanna start knowing what they're wearing so they can smell good to people around them. It's a, a snowball effect. Those fragrances do very well and people are wearing them all the time, left and right, all over the place, any time of year. Because there is not one single fragrance box that has instructions on it in terms of when you should wear it, in, in terms of what type of year. Maybe some will allude to, oh, it's a, a warm and sensual scent or, oh, it's a cool, refreshing scent, but they don't say for summer use only or whatever. And that's going to be up to you to decide, you know, there are certain scents that might work better for certain times of the year and you can cross that bridge when you feel as though you're comfortable enough to do so. Uh, but when you're starting out, don't stress about it so much, okay, you know, just take everything in stride, try to gain as much info as you can, smell as many different things as you can and everything will start to fall into place and make sense on its own, I promise. All right, now let's get into the list here, some things that I've written down. First one is, um, fragrances expiring slash going bad after a few years. This is a common one. This is one that you see all the time. It's one that I saw and also heard relentlessly when I was first starting out because I was hearing, you know, from people that I knew in real life saying, you're, dude, you're 17, 18 years old. You're spending all this money on cologne. Isn't it going to go bad in a couple years? You know, aren't you wasting your money? At the time, I was maybe thinking, oh, you know what, maybe they're right. You know, I, I had no idea, but uh, I was having fun and start to look into it a little bit. And now being about six, seven years into it, I've got things from the very beginning of my collection, first year starting out that still are in mint condition, smell amazing. And again, the more research you do, the more you realize that that's not really true, at least that time frame that they give you. I've got some vintage Creed bottles as well going back 20 years or so. I've got some other uh, scents that are also vintage as well that can go back even farther and they still smell amazing. It comes down to the storage of these scents. How do you store them? You know, you see uh, wine cellars. They're kind of in a, a cold or cool environment, very dark. You look at cigars. They're, they're stored in a climate controlled uh, environment with proper humidity, usually in a darker area as well. And it lasts for years and years and years, right? Whiskies and everything else. So many things that kind of uh, get better with age and time. 
kind of the same thing with fragrances. You know, you'll notice a little bit of a difference in smell depending on the quality of scent as it macerates or matures over time. Uh, just depending on the, the level of the, the quality of the compounds in the scent will uh, dictate how much that scent changes or gets better. Um, but they usually won't degrade, uh, at least for a very long time, so long as your storage is on point. And by that, I mean in a cool, uh, relatively dark environment where you're not having a bunch of temperature fluctuations and where they're out of sunlight, direct sunlight. You know, people freak out all the time. My lights are up for shooting videos, shining on the bottles. Oh, aren't they going to go bad? You know, I'm down here every day for 20 minutes a day shooting videos and then the lights go off and it's back to complete darkness in a cool environment. And again, it's natural sunlight, like coming through the windows, sh shining down on your bottles, giving a lot of heat is what you really want to be careful of. So that kind of answers that one. Don't sweat all of your stuff expiring or going bad. If you take care of them, they'll take care of you. Okay, next up we have eau de toilette concentrations, EDTs. You know, um, they're always weak. That's what people say. Oh, don't buy the EDT of this. It's weak. Don't buy the EDT of that, whatever, you know, and that simply isn't true. In a lot of cases, um, as you go up in concentration, you'll get into scents that are heavier and richer and, and may have better performance, but that's not always the case. I have some EDTs that perform better than EDPs and parfums and so on. Just a real quick example here. My bottle of Sauvage EDT performs better than my bottle of Dolce & Gabbana The One EDP, right? That's an example that everybody knows and I think we can all agree with, no matter how you feel about those fragrances. I mean, it's, it comes down to data. Sauvage EDT performs better than Dolce & Gabbana The One Eau de Parfum. And I could almost guarantee if Dolce & Gabbana The One was offered in a parfum, Sauvage ET, EDT would still perform better. And that's one example of very many, you know, and so that's just, that's not true. It, it totally depends on the scent, depends on the, the level of ingredients, what type of synthetics they're using, you know, generally um, the, the synthetics in the scent will help it perform better. A lot of ambroxan or something like that is going to give it that long performance. That's why Sauvage is such a beast mode scent. It's a lot of things that go into it that I don't even know because I'm not anywhere close to being a perfumer. Never have been, never will be. But, you know, I have enough sense in my collection and have smelled enough things to know that the concentration doesn't necessarily mean everything. For me personally, I actually prefer or tend to prefer higher concentrated scents, not even so much as a, a performance thing, but more so I like how they wear on my skin. They tend to project less, but leave a better trail. They're heavier, they're richer, they have more depth. That's kind of what I like about it. And sometimes, yeah, you'll get better performance as you go up, but sometimes it stays the same or doesn't change at all or, or whatever it may be. All right, let's keep it moving. And next up we have less is more. And this one actually goes both ways. You know, some people will say, you know, when it comes to your cologne, less is more. Only spray on a couple of sprays and you're good. You know, you read those articles and talking about men's style and things like that. Oh, just, just a couple sprays. But to the opposite end of that, you have, you need to spray the half the bottle on or else you're, you're not doing it right, you know, and you're wimping out. And so this one, it's as simple as a couple of things. One, a balance, but two, it depends on the scent. I think that's the one that is the most important. It totally depends. Going back to the example I just used here to keep it easy, Dolce & Gabbana, the one EDP. If you were to follow the less is more rule, no one's ever going to smell you. It's a simple fact, you know, with something like that, you need to apply it pretty heavily if your goal is to go out and smell good and, and actually get noticed by the scent that you're wearing. If you just do a couple sprays, no one's gonna smell you. But if you were to go with something like Sauvage Eau de Toilette, you know, you don't need a ton of it. It's strong on its own. That is one where you can get away with going for a couple sprays. And in most instances, especially if you're in an environment where you're going to be in close quarters, school, work, whatever, and you don't want to be obnoxious, you don't need a ton of it. You know, it also depends on the situation. If you're going out, you might want a few more sprays, but that's kind of what it comes down to. It depends it's, it's gonna be different depending on the scent. It's going to be different based off of your skin chemistry as well. It's gonna be different based off of the weather. Is it hot out? Is it cold out? If it's cold, it's going to kind of um, act as a detriment to your scent. It's gonna muffle it a little bit. If it's hot, that's going to act as a, a multiplier to your scent. It's gonna actually make it project more, not necessarily last longer, but project more and potentially become more cloying. 
So it varies based off a number of factors. And this is where it comes down to experience and trial and error. You're not going to figure all this stuff out after a couple months of collecting or, or, you know, a year of collecting even. There's still going to be things that you're kind of playing around with. And when you start kind of cultivating a collection of a, you know, a few scents that you know really well that you wear all the time, you'll, you'll know how they work and you'll be able to cater the amount of sprays based on that scent's performance and, and go from there. And you'll get it dialed in and it's going to work every time. Okay, let's move on to this one here, which is always kind of fun. Testers, you know, sometimes people say they're stronger. Sometimes people say they're weaker. Sometimes people say they're used. So let's dive right into this one. So this is kind of a funny one, you know, again, let's, let's start actually at the end. Are they used? No, it, unless it says that they're pre-owned 97% full or something like that, then they're not used. I buy testers all the time. If I have the option to buy a tester where it comes with a cap, I do it without thinking twice. And every time that I've bought a tester, whether it came with a cap or not, it's been unsprayed, at least to the best of my knowledge. You know, I do the couple sprays first, nothing comes out, it's getting primed. Now, sometimes as things sit, they can lose their prime, and so who knows? Someone could have accidentally hit that sprayer a couple times when they're packaging it up and stocking them on the shelves or whatever. And, and so there's that uh, kind of caveat there. But it, it's nothing where I've ever gotten a new tester and had a suspicion that it's been sprayed or used. It's something that has never crossed my mind. It's something I don't even worry about. Uh, when it comes down to testers being stronger or weaker, this is an interesting one because reformulations are a real thing. And so Generally, not always, but sometimes, tester stock will be older than new in box. So new in box usually sells quicker. The discounters, you know, they're they're getting them in, they're moving them out at a quicker pace. Testers might sit around for a while. You might have some testers that are 2019 batches, and you might have some new in box that are 22, 23 batches. Those newer batches, there's a good chance that at some point down the road, they've been reformulated and those testers, which are an older formulation, might perform better or be richer or stronger or different. There's always that possibility. There's no way to know for sure. It's another one of those things where it just depends. And if you spend a lot of time stressing about it and wondering about it, and is this going to be weaker? Is it going to be stronger? It takes away the fun and excitement of getting a new scent. Don't worry about it too much. If you can get a tester with a cap, it's always the way to go to me. I always do it and I recommend it as well. All right, let's go with this next one here. Discounters, okay? They sell fakes. They sell used bottles, which we kind of talked about that already. They sell old batches, I guess, which we also talked about that one. So we kind of already know the last two. Um, all the discounters that, that I shop at will indicate when something has been used. It'll either say it's... Uh, 97% uh, full. Sometimes they'll say unboxed, which unboxed usually shouldn't be used. I don't think they'll let you return things if you have sprayed them, but maybe there's an off chance that it happens or whatever. You'll have to contact whatever discounter you may be questioning and they'll answer that for you. Uh, but generally, no, they're not really selling used stuff all that often. In terms of fakes, uh, as long as you're shopping at the discounters that at least I and many of us have also mentioned, uh, you're good. So all the big ones. Fragrance Buy, Fragrance Net, Fragrance X, Joma Shop, Max Aroma, uh, things like that. And then you have the retailers, Twisted Lily, uh, Lucky Scent, and so on. They're all 100% authentic. I've purchased from all of those with my own money. I've spent a lot of money at a lot of those, especially Fragnet, Frag Buy, Joma Shop. Those are the three that I've spent a lot of money on, and I've never once questioned the authenticity of any of those. Now, if you start going down the rabbit hole, and believe me, people go down the rabbit hole. I get emails all the time asking me, you know, is this website legit? Is that website legit? If it's too good to be true, there's a good chance that it's probably too good to be true, and maybe you should be questioning it. And if you're taking the time to write up an email to me asking if it's legit or not, when you look at it, at the end of the day, how much money are you saving? Maybe they have that bottle for $10 less, $15 less. Is it worth the gamble if you're going to go click buy, put in your credit card information, and the whole time you're waiting for it to arrive at your house, you're going to be fretting that it's fake, you know, and then once it gets here and you open it up, you're going to have that confirmation bias and you're going to convince yourself that it's fake. 
it's not worth the headache, it's not worth the frustration, it's not worth trying to communicate with that discounter now to try to get a refund or a return, it, not worth it, okay? Stick with the ones that people know and it, it's just gonna be a stress-free, trouble-free buying experience. And the last one I think we're gonna cover today is storing your fragrances in the bathroom. And not just bathroom, but in places where the temperatures vary. Bathroom is the most common spot because generally, you jump in there, you turn the shower on, it gets warm, a lot of steam. You get out, open up the doors, turn the fan on, and it gets back to a normal temperature. If you do that every day for years and you have a bottle sitting in there, that's not good. And the same thing uh, can be said about storing a fragrance in a car or a vehicle or whatever out in your garage or something where it's not climate controlled, same deal. And so that's not good. And we kind of touched on that earlier, talking about storage and expiration. It's not good for it. Um, it will shorten the life. A lot of you guys have too many fragrances to where that's not an option. You guys don't have a big enough bathroom to store your fragrances. I know I don't. So it's not something that you're gonna have to worry about. If you're someone that has a small collection, it, try to avoid it. Now I will say this, um, controversial, but I will say it. If you only have one fragrance, which how many of you guys really have one? But if you do only have one, and it's something you wear every single day, you're gonna burn through that bottle before the temperature fluctuations destroy it. And that's just that. If you truly are wearing it every day, a few sprays a day, it's gonna be long gone before any detriment has happened to the scent itself, okay? But again, I think that's a rare case. I don't think a lot of you guys have only one that you wear every day. You probably have two or three, and once you start to get two or three or more, storing in the bathroom is not a good idea because you're not gonna be able to use them up in time, most likely. Unless it's a community bathroom and everybody's using them in your house, you got a bunch of people burning through a few bottles, but probably not the case either. So yeah, avoid it if you can. If you have a dresser or something in your bedroom, throw them there, try to keep the sun off of them, whatever you can do. All right, you guys, there you have it. There's some fragrance misconceptions that have been hopefully resolved for you. Um, again, it's uh, a lot of information when you're starting out. So I try to keep it clear and concise. These are some of the main ones people worry about. The main thing, and I've said it throughout the video is, don't stress. As soon as you start stressing about any sort of hobby, doesn't matter what it is, it will start to kind of ruin it for you, dilute it for you. Just, just don't worry about it. If you like fragrances, wear them. You know, if you like wine, drink it. You know, whatever it is, just, just enjoy it. Don't let the hobby control you and run your life. You know, it's there to, to kind of make your life better. So make sure you don't let it get to you. I've got fragrance mailing lists and texting lists you can sign up to at the link and number down below. I'm always on the hunt for rare, discontinued, and hard to find fragrances. So if you want to be the first to know when things restock, and here in a couple days, I'll tell you, some big ones are gonna be restocking, some rare ones, you know? Maybe a little DHP, maybe a little Blue Electrique, maybe some, uh, there's one more, Lamal Elixir for cheap, you know, cheap, uh, relatively speaking. Things like that, you will be the first to know if you sign up down below. You don't want to miss what's about to come. Thank you so much for watching. Stay safe, stay healthy. We'll see you tomorrow with another one. Take care.